Hello everyone. Today we're doing the 172 Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A Airfix. This is a starter set, so we're going to get a brush, four paints, and some glue. Quick look at it before we dive into the box. You get one colour scheme, as you can see there. It is where are we? There is a date usually for when it was done. Here we go. 2010 it was told. Decal schemes are also 2010. Cartograph decals, one flying hour. There's a little bit about the aircraft and stuff, but yeah, that's what we're doing. But to make it look a bit different, I've got that cheap. If anybody's seen my video, 10 quid for an airbrush off of uh, Aldi. In fact the kit's from Aldi as well, that was 6 99 so it's all quite cheap. What we're going to do is see how good a, a paint job we can get on this with this. You're not going to get super fine details but with it I'm sure I can get the base coats that paint layers down and we're using some blue tack for masking or unmasking tape as well I'm sure I'll be able to get the rest of the paints on so it looks quite nice so no further ado get it out of the box let's get building right what I'm doing is I'm going to cut my parts off because I've read the instructions and for each stage I cut my parts off for that stage all individual I cut as close as I can to the actual part with these nippers but these are really dear pair and in all honesty you don't need them there's some I bought on a whim and probably didn't have to but any pair of nippers or a good pair of scissors actually do it but just don't cut too close to the part if you're doing that next off I, what I do is I try and sand it down a bit as you can see get rid of them little nubs you get left on the actual part and you can sand them down like this and it, it, it helps I find especially when you're placing pieces in to do it now before then ending up struggling when you're gluing them these little sanding sticks are quite good but this one's falling apart I'll fit the seat in first The glue I'm using is Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. It's my preferred glue, to be honest. I, I, I find it fantastic. Tiny little drops like that. Put it on. Make sure it's seated right, this. But it'll be dried in seconds. That'll be it now. Same again for adding the back section. You just place it against it. Tiniest bit of glue against it. And usually it works. <laughs> There you go, it's, it's took this time. Put a little bit more just to make sure it's got a good seal. And all you do is just run it round where they're touching and it just seeps straight in, into the crack. It's fantastic. There you go, that's all set up. And just see if this uh, little man sits in it. it. Should do. I've had a couple of those, you can't get them in, the feet get stuck. Now that seems alright. Yeah, fine. These won't paint it up now though. Right, I've got a bit of Tamiya cockpit green in this uh, spray gun at the minute. You don't need to use that. You could have you you can use the green that comes with the actual kit, which is what it tells you to do. But I prefer the Tamiya one, and I've got it, and I've already got it pre-mixed, so I just use this. So I blasted a bit on the seat and that, so that you can actually paint or uh, well detail that up after and while I've got it going I'll put a little bit in the cockpit area itself as you can see I don't even bother taking them off at sprue to do this it's just as easy just to blast it on like that so now I'm going to paint my figure up a bit and I'm using the colours that you get with the kit now the four main ones this is the brown just to get on his jacket and that and leggings I've made up a little bit of really thin wash because I've, I've painted the details tiny ones on inside at cockpit so what I'm doing now is just I've, I've 
thinned it up as you can see it's really watered down so it's like a wash just to try and highlight some of these details inside cockpit now I'm not saying it's going to look great because it's not a proper wash but at least it's somewhat there was a bit different and it should look all right when it dries this decals the instrument panel that I've just got to stick onto the cop well into the cockpit uh, I use a Mr. Mark setter um, I've used it for quite a while now it's my favorite decal solution but yeah just you just place it it's you're not going to see much of it to be honest it, it isn't the greatest fit but it did do it now the propeller section comes in three pieces so I use a little bit of blue tack like that on end of a uh, crocodile clamp over the column and that way it holds it for me a bit easier than trying to hold a little tiny piece and this just sits in there it's supposed to go into the end of the aircraft when I, I come to do it I'm open so every now and then though I do these and the actual part it don't go in it's not the hole's not big enough so you just have to make it a little bit bigger little stickers uh, piloting hopefully it'll look all right when he's in it you're not going to see a lot anyway you never do on these 172 scale ones the 148 is better, you gain a lot more detail seen and uh, cockpits are a lot bigger. So just placed him and the actual seat in there and all that into the uh, main part, of main uh, frame part. Now I put these together and what I do is I just hold them together, run the Tamiya extra thin, just, just down the seam and it, I think it helps that you clean off any old glue that uh, not glue sorry paint if it's on from when you've sprayed i use either wipe it off immediately or i just run my sanding stick faintly over it and that takes it away so it's only where the glue's gonna touch run like that so you don't have to go crackers with it but it does help because this tammy are extra thin it doesn't like sticking if there's paint there it really don't Right, we'll put the bottom of the uh, wings section in. Fits in lovely, that, to be honest. Absolutely perfect. This kit, it's been up to now. Fantastic to build. I ain't had a problem really with any of it. As you can see, lovely little fit, that. The top section, I usually put a couple of drops, as you can see, the Revel contactor. And then I just click it in and just run around the edge again. Tell me how extra thin. Just press it in and it'll be fine. You might get a bit of seepage come out at edges on the uh, front, and all you do is just faintly sand that off once it's dried. Start put the tail pieces in. And that one just sits lovely into there. Just a little bit of alteration, just finished off with a little bit more glue, and that that'll be it. I mean, you could do this if you wanted. We we are it fits turned or anything if you wanted, but uh, I like to keep them as if they're stored on ground. Stood. They click in. They've got a little uh, locating pin on them, so they're going brilliant. And again, fantastic fit, no problem whatsoever. Um, these exhausts, they're just sitting like that again, no problem. Just a little bit of. Tammy are down in there just to help seal it in. And now for the cockpit. This is a tight fit, this. You'll hear it click in when it finally does. But I run the tiniest thin amount of contactor just on the edge where it's going to sit down the uh, cockpit. And then that way, there you go, did you hear it? That way, uh, it don't fog up the inside of the screen. Now we're getting down to the last of the parts that we fit into it before we start and paint. 
and these are just your little covers yeah just different little tiny bits they're easy enough they all fit perfectly they're all designed as well so that the slot in only one way so you don't make a mistake like that and we'll just put the uh, tail wheel in and that should now be enough done for us to uh, get some paint on easy build didn't take long right cheap take the greatest uh, primer but it does for what I want for these kind of kits so I blast a bit of primer on you do not have to do this but I like to put a little bit of primer on because I think it helps the paint to stick in a deer when you start spraying that on and it's spraying out seems to be all right oops but I think I want more coming out than what it's doing yeah that's a bit better but I'll be honest with you, even now I've, I've started to think, you know what, this this is not the good, it don't like spraying thickish paints. That's come straight from the bottle, I hadn't thinned it, and it is quite a thickish primer in all honesty. But it's, it seems to have come in out half decent, especially now that I've opened it up a bit more. It's a lot better than it was, but I'm having to constantly clean the end it's drying quite fast i don't know whether that's just the type it is or what my house is quite warm at the minute because it's, it's cold out so eating's blasting but yeah it didn't seem to be great but now i've got on to actually spraying the paint the ones that come and this one's come straight out the bottle it seems to be sprayed on lovely now but i'm in all honesty i've started to see like a like a mottling effect it's like not perfect it's not as good as what I were hoping it was going to be but yeah well I put a second coat on and that didn't seem to take a it just didn't want to come out so I've ended up cleaning it out a bit and starting again and this time it seems to be spraying a lot lot better a lot better and I'm wondering whether I'd left it sorry about the noise there but I'm wondering if I'd left it a bit too uh, mucky inside it. So I clean it out, everything's fine now. Gone to green and the green spraying brilliant. No mottling, no nothing. It's not struggling to spray it. Not having to try and get it till it's cranked up. So I think it might have been that paint itself. This green I had to thin a little bit. I used some uh, Mr. Sur is it Mr. Surface uh, uh, 400 leveling thinner. Fantastic, goes in everything just about that. But that green, lovely, it's gone down fantastic. Can't complain. So I'm, I'm really thinking it's the paint more than it is the airbrush at the minute. But, uh, it's a, one of them. So here we go, I've got me uh, white tack on it. Get a bit of brown on it now. As you can see there, it seems to be coming out again. Just, just fun. It's great, there's no problem with it for spraying her out like this. Obviously, you're never going to get fine details and all the tiny splotches and little lines and stuff like that because it's it's just not going to do that. I mean, it's ten it's a ten pound airbrush or twenty quid if you pay full price. It's just never going to be the greatest airbrush, so don't don't try and expect it from it. But to now, it seems to be working all right. Right, let's. Uh, see how we've gone with the masking this is a tape i use here it's called lower dc frog tape it's brilliant it's virtually like a giant roll of tamiya's uh, tape i use both but out big i use that lower dc and this we have sprayed now for uh, the actual camouflage up to now seems to have worked all right although the blue tack really has stuck to that paint <laughs> But you just have to keep dabbing at it, slowly peeling it off in sections like that. If you do that, where you dab like that, that seems to bring it off a little bit better. Once, especially when you've got the bulk off, as you can see there. But yeah, seems to have come off nice. 
I've tried to keep the actual camouflage to what it shows you on the kit, so. But, oh, I only tried. Yeah, that's sprayed lovely. Again, the underside, I, I can see the tiny bit of uh, marbling or whatever you're going to call it effect. Decals again, this time still going on with uh, Mr. Mark Setter. It's fantastic stuff like that. But you do get the, these cartograph decals that you get from uh, Airfix. You do get the opportunity to move them about a little bit. They don't tend to tear. They're, they're really good. That, in my view, way better than anything you gain from Tamiars and Dragons and that. The only ones I'd say are better is the new uh, Edward ones. But these are really good decals. And they look fantastic when they've dried. You don't get any silver in. If you do, you've been damned unlucky, in all honesty. I ain't even put any gloss on this. I've just gone straight front paint, straight to decals. And you can. It's just an old habit I've got when I put the gloss on. You only need a little bit of the Mr. Mark setter underneath it. And then when you move it about a bit, put it into place, it'll just spread out anyway. Just enough just to uh, make sure it's wet underneath when you first put it on. But yeah, you could the cracking little decals these. I don't know what they're going to be like in say 10, 15 years, but at the minute, yeah, lovely. Bit of gloss over it now. I've, I've done that. I'm going to do this so I can put a uh, panel line wash on. And this is just Tamiya's uh, straight clear. It's called. It's just clear. I use this because it's quick drying, works brill. Now my panel line wash, this is the MIG Productions enamel black wash. I thin it down, I find it's a bit too strong when you first start and you it. So I thin it down a bit with a bit of uh, turpentine, works brill. I use that low order stuff as well. But I've got the actual uh, MIG's thinner, but I just don't even bother using that. This works fine, so I use it. And all this is, a bit of kitchen towel, paper towel, whatever you want to call it. And all I do is, I just gently rub on top of it. And it'll take off of the surface all, all of that black that's spilt, you've overdone too much or whatever. Little bits just come out there because I've probably not left it to dry long enough. But no, that's all right. And it takes all of that away, all them little edges where you, you didn't quite get your brush perfect. And it leaves it with a lovely finish you can see into panel li the panel lines and on the side there you can see there how much it's brought out them panel lines the detail there now putting the undercarriage on trying to make sure I've got it right way around because it's not the first time I've stuffed up but anyway that's gone in alright. I use the contact at Revel Contact. I've got some Tamiya thick glue as well. Sometimes I use that. But when you've got painted parts, you've got to use something like that. That umbral glue you get with this kit, that'll do it as well. It will eat into the paint and make the parts stick together. Yep, wheels have gone on nice. And now I'm doing the tiny last bits of... Uh, Got to paint these obviously, now I'm putting them in, but I always put these on after because if you've seen my videos before, you'll know full well, I break them. I break these little bits off without even thinking about it. But because you put them on last, you've got to paint them up like this here. Don't take you long, it's just a bit of a touch up. I should mention all four pots of paint that I got with this kit, all four have been good. And the glue is good as well, I've checked it. This is the brush where I'm using at the minute, what you get with a kit. I try and use the, the stuff you get if I can. But I'm not doing any weathering on it. They were only that uh, panel wash, just to highlight and make them look a bit nicer. But this is it, I'm building it as the kit is. So this is a uh, Winsor Newton's flat varnish. You get absolutely shed loads of it in a big bottle for about six, seven quid. 
might be a little bit more now, but that's what I paid. And it is probably the best flat varnish I've ever seen. It's looking a bit wet at the minute. Well, uh, glossy at the minute because it's a wet varnish as it's going on. But it, it, when that dries, it absolutely blends it all in. Brill. You can actually see it there. Look at that. So, we'll take off the uh, masking. I'm hoping that there's been no spillages, well, they're not spillages, they're creeping of paint under the masking, but you can never tell. But if you do get any, if you just get a cocktail stick, just plump the end like a tiny bit, don't have it too, too pointed, and you just rub it over where the paint is, it just takes away that paint off it. But you've got to be careful that you don't scratch it. But that, Looking at that, I don't think there's been any real spill. There's no leakage at all there. It looks fine. Looks good. Stick propeller on. And that, I think it's the last part. It's a bit tight. That's probably because there's a bit too much paint on it now. But yeah, she is. she's in. And now she's finished. And in all honesty, this kit, it's a lovely kit, lovely start, I'll, I'll be honest, if you were starting out in hobby, this kit would set you up fantastic. But if you look at it, and I know I've pin washed it so it helps highlight all of the uh, details, but look at that. The panel lines, it's lovely and crisp. The decals are absolutely beautiful. This is now like Airfix's standard. The, the the moderner kits are just brilliant. Look at all that detail under there. Couldn't ask for more. And if you look inside copper, you might just see there's a little bit of well, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a bit of detail. But even the canopy itself, look at that. Lovely, crisp, clear. Yeah, I'm I'm well impressed with the the kit. And like like that, it, well, I know it's from Aldi when they'd got a deal on, but six ninety nine, and you've got your glue, which I I know I've used a different glue, but it's it's near, that is, it's just a bit better applicator. It's near enough the same glue as that. It's just with that needle applicator, you're not getting it everywhere. But you can use a toothpick if you want, just to put tiny amounts of that one. The brush, you've seen me using the brush, and I've used all the paints there, and they've all they all were good paints, not had a problem with them. So I'm happy with that. But the actual kit, uh, I, I, it, you do one of these and it fills you with joy doing it. Really does fill you with joy doing it. But oh, that's the other thing. Instructions. Airfix instructions for these more modern kits. Look at that. Look at how easy that is. You can see how everything's fitting together perfectly. Can't can't be airfix instructions. I know they're black and white, but they do what you want them to. You've got no spare decals and the only parts you've got spare is these two, which is the undercarriage that would have gone underneath if you'd have had it as uh, wheels up. But I prefer them wheels down when they're just little kits like this. So we'll move off of the actual kit itself and we'll move on to this airbrush now because the idea was to do them both together. This airbrush as you can see and I've used blue tack, white tack, whichever one it was to do the uh, camouflage and you can see it's fine. It's absolutely spot on. and. For the airbrush itself, if you look underneath here, and I think this is the paint, because this paint is smooth as anything. It's lovely, lovely smooth paint. This one's a bit marbly, a little bit dotty. And I'm wondering whether this one, I actually... Uh, oh, I've left a bit over that. I'll have to clean that off after. But I, I'm wondering whether I the paint I've not sprayed it right or whatever these have sprayed perfectly maybe it's me getting used to this airbrush but although it does look good looks all right it could have been a little bit better I think yeah it's just got a 
a little bit of uh, thing over that bit there. It's meant to be see through. But as for the airbrush, you can see it sprays okay. It's a pain having to use, where is it there? It's a pain having to do that all the time, but you get used to it, I suppose. I haven't charged it yet. I did the first charge when I first got it after a few to make sure it was fully charged. I haven't charged it again for this kit. It's done this kit without a problem. Cleans up easily enough, but what I will say is I think this is because it's been designed mainly for cakes rather than it is for modelling. In fact, it weren't designed for modelling. That bit there can get clogged easily. But I've got here, oops, let me just get these out. I've got some of these here. Only little like wire cleaners. And you can put it in, do that, cleans it out lovely. Sorry about that, that's my cat. And it cleans them out lovely like that. But if you ain't got these, one of them dental cleaning stick things that you can get from any supermarket or chemist or something like that, will do just as good. But yeah, it's been a decent airbrush. For £10, you really you couldn't knock it. And as an, a, a starter entry, I'd never say this is what you need for doing massive kits, because it'll not do it. But yeah, for, for the £10, yeah. After that, I'd either recommend getting a proper compressor and airbrush where you've got the cords and that, or if you want to stick with a battery, because it's so convenient, you can take it with you. Especially if you're working away from home or you're on holiday or anything like that, you can take a battery. Get the one that I've got, wherever it is. I think my daughter's got that one again. Oh, it's not. It's here. Get this one here. This is a better one here. This one. I've done reviews on it, or a similar style one. But that is... Forget that one. That don't come with it. That is a dual action one, that. So you press it down and back down and back that makes it, it actually pump it out yeah rather than just the single action one where it's always running so I'd get one of them before I would anything else but this if you've never airbrushed and you want to try it give it get it try it's worth a go it really is so on that note I hope you've enjoyed the video I've really enjoyed building this kit I'm actually looking forward now to my next perfect start one but I'm going to be doing something a bit different next time so bit of luck you'll be around for the next video thanks for watching please like and subscribe I'm at this moment we're about 18 20 something like that off being the thousand subscribers I can't believe it it's unbelievable how this channel's grown over the year so catch you around for the next video have a good one